hijacking going on, I suppose it's a good thing having you along. But if you keep on driving this crate yourself, well, you're gonna run me right out of a job. And if anything happens to my last truck, the Duncan Transportation Company will be busted and we'll both be out of a job. So we gotta be careful. I don't see why anyone should be so hot after this load of hardware we're packing. Well, it isn't just hardware. We're loaded with precision machine tools for the government stockpile of critical materials. That's just the kind of stuff the crooks are going after. That's it. Okay. Mr. Patterson, he represents our government. Mr. Crandall? Pleasure. How do you do? Mr. Thompson? How are you? Mr. Willard? Glad to know you. How are you? And Mr. Duncan. Well, I'm already acquainted with Mr. Duncan. We worked together during the war. Oh, is that so? Well, as far as we truck owners are concerned, we're practically in another war with these hijackers right now. And we'd appreciate any help you can give us and how to protect ourselves. Well, that's why I'm here, Mr. Armstrong. Gentlemen, all of you have suffered considerable loss from the hijackers the last few months. It looks very much like it's the work of a single organized gang, since they only go after shipments on the government's critical supply list. That's what I've always maintained. Some organization of saboteurs or foreign agents is trying to wreck this country's defense program. Well, that may be it, Mr. Crandall. Or someone may be running the gang just for his own profit. In any event, the situation is serious enough to warrant the assigning of a government agent to work full-time with your association. And I believe Hal Duncan would be just the man for the job. Your knowledge of trucking operations and uh, your war experience as an undercover investigator gives you the necessary qualifications. Well, this is pretty sudden. But none of us are going to do any good in the trucking business until this gang is cleaned up. So I'll tackle the job if it's all right with the others. What makes you think Duncan can handle the job better than the police? Because it seems very likely that some of your employees are working with the thieves, since they always know when and where important shipments are being made. And I feel Hal would have a better chance to uncover the informers than an outsider would. I'm for it. What do you think, Willard? Oh, I vote yes. It's about time these outrages stopped. Sounds like an excellent idea to me. How about you, Thompson? I still think the police should be able to handle the job. That's what we pay taxes for. However, since I'm outvoted, I'll go along with the rest of you. Good. Then the job is yours, Hal. I'll take you right over to headquarters and have you sworn in. We want to give you all the help we can, Hal. Thanks. I think my best bet is to ride with the trucks until I can pick up some leads. But I would like to have access to your records and reports here. Of course. Make this office your headquarters. Miss Roberts will give you all the help she can. Well, good luck, Hal. Thanks. I think we'll get to the bottom of this thing now. When's he gonna get here, Regan? As soon as he can get away from the association meeting. It's a funny business working for a boss you never even see. Yeah, but don't forget, he can always see us, Katie. 
With the kind of stakes he's playing for, he can't afford to trust anybody. And for the kind of dough he's paying us, we got nothing to kick about. There he is now. I have some bad news. In the association meeting today, Hal Duncan was appointed special government agent to try and break up our organization. Well, he can't get anything on you, can he? I'll see that he doesn't. But he already suspects that we have connections inside the association. And I'll have to be very careful what I say at the meetings. How's he going to operate? So far, he plans only to ride as a guard on some of the trucks. So if he should happen to be on one you stop, you know what to do about it. OK. Can we still go on with the hijacking? Yes, my buyers, both in the black market here and abroad, will pay almost any price for the critical materials the government is stockpiling. And we must secure these materials before they're placed under guard in federal warehouses. Your next assignment will be to get some hand grenades. Have you got a plan laid out? Yes, a truck will be coming in from a government arsenal with a load of hand grenades tomorrow afternoon. They will take the alternate highway across the valley, and you will... get into enough jams trying to get your own trucks through without taking on Armstrong's troubles, too? Now, this time we're looking for trouble. I want to get a line on some of these hijackers, and this load of grenades ought to be good bait. It's a track up. It looks like somebody's hurt. Badly hurt? I'm afraid so. I don't know whether I should move him. I can't find anything wrong with him. Get your hands up. Break into that truck and get some grenades. Now you two get over the side of the road. Tie him up. He's finished tying them, drop those in their pockets. Here, give me one of those grenades. find them down there. We better clear out. You take the car. Now it looks like we're in the clear. Yes, but we're a long way from home. And it's miles to a phone. So by the time we can turn in a report, the truck will be hidden out someplace, getting a new set of numbers and a repaint job. Yes, but I got the number of that car, and they might not think to change that. Let's go. Now, the police are on the job now. I gave them the numbers of both the car and the truck. I hope it does some good. Well, it might. They're setting up roadblocks on all the highways. Let's go. Come on. Is this your car? Yes. Why? Pull over to the side of the road.
hijacker was killed in the wreck and the police haven't found any trace of the stolen truck. How can anyone ever dispose of a stolen truck? Well, they switch numbers, repaint, even rebuild bodies. It can be done all right, but it takes time and they have to have a safe place to work in. Say, that might give us a lead. With the quantity of stuff they've handled, they must need a lot of warehouse space. And there aren't too many big warehouses available to them. I know, but supposing they took the loot to some other city? Well, I don't think they'd risk it. The police have the out-of-town highways pretty well patrolled. So chances are they're storing the stuff and working over the trucks here. Say, I've got an idea. Let's get a list of all the warehouses in town, and tomorrow Sam and I will start checking on them. All right. Well, we sure drew a blank there. Where's the next one? 1322 Eastern Avenue. OK, let's go. Again, might as well keep trying, you never know. You guys better get out of sight. Government agent. Just wanted to look around. Okay. Nothing much doing in here, but help your son. Thanks. came off of one of Armstrong's trucks. You sure? Positive. I looked at this cut in the casing, wondering how long it would last. All right, stick him up. Frisco.
You okay? Sure. What happened to you? Plenty, I'll tell you later. There's a tunnel under here that looks like it might lead to the waterfront. I'm going to report to the police, and then we'll check on that tunnel. Look around and see what else you can find. Okay. So I followed the tunnel to a small warehouse on the waterfront, but the two men had disappeared. Then the thieves must have been shipping their loot out by water, probably to some enemy country. And that was all critical defense material. We must do something to break this up. Did you find any clues as to the identity of the criminals? No, the owner of the warehouse had rented it to the man who was killed, and we couldn't connect him with anyone else. However, I did find these papers, duplicates of our shipping schedules. Well, that certainly proves that some of our own employees are selling us out. Yes, and I suggest in the future that you keep your schedules as secret as possible. And if you'll notify me when you have an important shipment, I'll try to protect it for you. Okay, that's a good idea. Count on me. That ought to work out, think, will it? Call on us for any help you need. Thank you. Hal, how are you going to protect those shipments? Well, I'm going to set up checkpoints along the highways and schedules for every driver. If a truck fails to pass a checkpoint on time, it'll be reported and we can go looking for it right away. Well, that sounds practical. Do you want to handle the uh, reports through this office? Yes, I'll put in a two-way radio here. The checkpoints will report to you and you can pass the information on to me. Sam and I will be cruising around in a patrol car so we can get into action in a hurry. Oh, better still, we'll use an old jalopy so they can't spot us so easily. Well, that's a better idea. Duncan is attempting to keep the shipping schedule secret, but of course I will always be able to obtain the necessary information. What's the next job? Some radar equipment, which I need to fill a foreign order. It will be coming in on Highway 17 and should be crossing the mountains between 10 and 12 tonight. Do you think there'll be any extra guards? As far as I know, Duncan has made no arrangements for any. Calling Association Patrol. Calling Association Patrol. Come in, Kay. Armstrong's number five is 30 minutes overdue at Stewart's Corners checkpoint. Right, Kay, we'll look for it. Number five was coming in on 17. If it was stolen, they'll probably bring it through over Morgan Hill Road's head for there. We're on our way. That isn't just chariot you insist on using holes together. Something happened to that truck, all right, or we would have met him by now. Yeah. Here's our turn off. There it is, Sam. It ain't going to be easy to flag down that string of freight cars on this road. Pull alongside that ladder. I'll climb aboard. Someone climbing on the back of the ring. Trying to get into that trailer, I'll fix him.
Well, we collected one of them anyway. Is the car wrecked? No, we can push it back onto the road. What are we going to do with him? Well, we'll park him in the Mercer jail tonight. Then I'll take him into the association meeting tomorrow morning and see if any of them recognize him. Come on, on your feet. Get going. Sorry to keep you waiting, but Mr. Duncan said he'd be here with a prisoner by 10 o'clock. Where did he keep the man last night? In a town jail at Mercer. Calling association office. Calling association office. Come in, Hal. Oh, our prisoner's dead. He had some kind of pill hidden on him and swallowed it when we were taking him out of jail. We rushed him to the hospital, but he passed out before they could do anything for him. Are you coming back here, Hal? The meeting's waiting. Well, tell him I can't possibly make it. I'm just leaving the hospital here in Mercer to go to the county seat and get the coroner. It'll be the middle of the afternoon before I can get away. All right, Hal. Well, there's nothing more we can do here. Yeah, we can get the details for the next meeting. Come on. Katie. Yes, sir. I've located Regan. Where is he? He's in the hospital at Mercer. He took one of the M6 pills. They think he's dead. Well, we can get him out of there, all right. Yes, but you'll have to move fast. Phone Miller and tell him to meet you down. Hello, I didn't expect you, sir. The men from the morgue said that you told them to bring the body to you, and they just left with it. What? I did no such thing. I better stop that morgue wagon. Which way did it go? East, along the highway. Just out of Mercer. I got away okay. Somebody's trailing us. He's after us, all right.
throw the stretcher out in front of me. Stretcher out in front of me. So Regan wasn't dead after all. The pill he took must have contained some powerful drug that left him in a state of suspended animation. But how did the rest of the gang know where he was? Well, I wish I could answer that question. Of course, the authorities at Mercer knew all about him, but it's hard to believe that they'd have any connection with the crooks. You didn't give out the storage of the press? No, I said nothing to anyone except in my report to you gentlemen here. You mean you think there might have been a leak from this office? Well, there certainly is a leak somewhere. Well, it's preposterous to suggest that anyone in this room is connected with the criminals, but... One of us might have talked too much. I suppose that's possible, but this is becoming a very serious situation. Yes, it's so serious that the government has decided to start shipping critical materials by train instead of truck. Oh, so that's why my shipment of electronic instruments was canceled. Yes, and I'm afraid you'll continue to lose more government business until we can stop these hijackers. Are you keeping up your road patrol and checkpoint system? Yes. All we need is a little luck and we'll catch them eventually. Well, I hope it's soon. Yes, and if you need me help, let us know. Yes, anything would be cheaper than losing our government contracts. Yes. We have almost done our job too well. The government is starting to send some of its shipments by train instead of truck. Well, maybe we better lay off for a while. We can't afford to. I need those electronic instruments to fill a very important order for my best foreign customer. Where can we get them? At least a part of a shipment is already in a warehouse here in town. Well, any warehouse with that stuff in it is bound to be pretty well guarded. It is, but we can take care of that too. The master cable for the central burglar alarm system runs through an underground conduit on 3rd Street. Cutting that cable will start all the alarms ringing and every policeman in the district will... Thank <laughs> you. 
and watchman in town is chasing burglar alarm. We're in the clear. Get to work. Companies aren't the only ones being robbed. No, but this time the crooks only did half the job. What do you mean? Now, the parts that were stolen are only some of the ones needed to make the instruments. The rest of the parts are on their way here by train, so whoever plans to use them will have to have both consignments. You don't think they dare try to rob a train? Yeah, they might. The stuff is coming in on a passenger train. It'll stop at Sanborn Junction at 2.40 this afternoon. I'm going out there and post guard on the express car for the trip across the mountains. I'll call you later. Everything's all set. Call Kay and tell her that the shipment's in good order and that a half a dozen guards are riding with her from here on. I'm going to stand by until the train pulls up. Right. Duncan's put a half a dozen guards in the express car, so we can't go aboard the train to stop it. Take some dynamite out to where the trucks are waiting, and when the train comes through, blow up the tracks. That'll work just as well. Right. Okay, Regan, get your hands up. Now turn around. Get going.
What happened? Plenty. The hijacker's gonna wreck the train and steal that shipment. We gotta stop him. Oh, there's no other station between here and the mountains, and we can't catch a train with a car. Well, there's an airport on the edge of town. We'll charter a plane and flag him down. side of the mountains. They have to pick a spot where their trucks can get to it. And we haven't got much time. Now take the car back out of sight. Tell the trucks to wait where they are until they hear the crash. Great. and I'll parachute down in front of him.
hold her steady. Right. found the place where they planned to blow up the train, but the wreckers had escaped. Then the electronic instruments got through safely? Yes, they're now in a government warehouse. But they're not complete instruments, only parts. The other necessary parts to make up the instruments were stolen from a warehouse last week. Then the shipment that came in by train is useless. Well, until other parts could be made or the stolen ones recovered. No one's ever had much luck in recovering anything from that gang. No, but in this case, the parts the gang already have are no good to them either. So the government is offering a reward of $50,000 for their return. That might tempt the crooks to do business. Well, that's what we're hoping. The government has ordered me to act as contact man if we hear anything from them. Sounds like a good idea. Well, I certainly hope it works. I'll be glad when this gang is cleaned up and we get back in business again. <laughs> We have an opportunity to cash in on those radar parts after all. I just learned at the association meeting that the government is offering a $50,000 reward for their recovery. Are you sure that's on the level? Sounds like a trap. I don't think so. The government is urgently in need of that equipment, and they have every reason for wanting to go through with the deal. Since the parts we have are of no use to us, we might as well do business with them. How are we going to collect the payoff? I'll send instructions to Duncan telling him just what to do. And you will take the load of parts to Taylor Flats. There. I'll tie the wire onto the pull ring, Kitty. Better pull that box out so it'll hide the bomb. and stay out of sight. And don't start anything until we make sure he's got the money with him. Okay. Stuff's there all right, Duncan. Yeah, how do I know what's in those boxes? And you'd better take my word for it, because there's also a bomb in there. And I'm holding onto the wire that's tied to the detonating handle. If I pull it, that whole truck will be blowing sky high and you with it. OK, you win. What's the deal? Throw your gun away, then walk over here and show me that money. I'll meet you halfway, after you throw your gun away. OK.
When you see the money, do I get the truck? That's the deal. Yeah, it looks all right. Kitty! Too. Can't help it. We'd never catch him now. Well, I'll have to tell the boss. Calling V-317. Calling V-317. Come in, Regan. He got away with the money, too. Then there's nothing more you can do now. Keep out of sight until further orders. Yes, sir. Calling Trucking Association. Calling Trucking Association. Come in, Hal. Kay, I just picked up a radio conversation between Regan and his boss. What did you hear? Well, nothing important. But I got their wavelength, and I'm going to let them hear one of my messages that'll lead them right into a trap. Tune your set into 1028 and play along with me when I call you on that band. Right. Calling Trucking Association. Calling Trucking Association. That's Duncan. Come in, Hal. The deal didn't work, Kay, but I got out of it all right, and I still have the money. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, it's too late to get the money back to the bank, so I want to leave it in your office safe tonight. All right, Hal. I'll wait here for you. Hey, we'll cash in on this deal yet. Any office safe is a cinch to crack. Get going. You're not really going to leave that money here, are you? No, I'm going to take it to headquarters and turn it in. But if those crooks did get my message, they'll probably be here sometime tonight. We'll be ready for them. Yes, but you'll have to stand watch alone until I can get back. Keep out of sight, and if they break in, wait till they get where you can handle them. Right. I can take you home on my way to headquarters. Thanks. I'll try to be back by 9. OK. Come in the front door, boys. It's unlocked. Put your guns on the desk, one at a time. You first.
Let's get to work on this safe. There's no money here. I was able to save the reward money, but the shipment of electronic instruments was completely destroyed. That certainly won't help our reputation with the government, but they'll be afraid to use our trucks after this, especially with that uranium. Well, not necessarily. They still want you to go on moving critical supplies to the national stockpile, but they're imposing certain conditions. So from now on, all government shipping orders will be given to me, and I'll hand them out one at a time to your different companies at the last minute. Just how much business are we going to get? Well, I can't give you any details but there's a considerable amount of refined uranium to be moved to the central stockpile. As the consignments are ready, I'll hand out shipping orders to each of you. Well, that sounds perfectly reasonable. Yes, I guess so. Well, we better get plenty of business to pay us for being treated like this. So the only shipping orders I will be able to see are the ones issued to my own company. And if we should take any of those cargoes, I would immediately be under suspicion but I must have a supply of uranium for my foreign customer. Is there any chance of getting those schedules from Duncan? Possibly. But if we did, he'd just order them canceled, unless we had some other hold on him. What do you mean? Miss Roberts, the association secretary, is our best chance. If we were holding her prisoner, I believe Duncan would do anything we ask. How do we work it? She doesn't leave the office until after dark. 
So get there just before six. Now, just take it easy, Miss Roberts, and you won't get hurt. Where are those government shipping schedules? Why, I don't know. Mr. Duncan has charge of them, and I don't know what he does with them. Oh? Uh, well, we're going to take a look around, and you're going to help us. You better get to the office. I want to pick up my mail before Kay leaves. Suits me. Where else can we look? I tell you, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Duncan has them with him. Okay, let's go. We're going to keep you with us until somebody gives us those schedules. That's Regan and Katie. They've got Kate. No, you might hit her. I'll have to trail them until we can stop the car. Somebody's trailing us. You better step on it. got this ransom letter. If you wish to see Miss Roberts again, bring duplicates of the uranium shipping schedules to apartment 27, 954 Clayton Street. Say nothing to anyone until we have time to get the uranium. Then Miss Roberts will be released. So we give them all the dope and then sit back and wait for them to hijack the stuff? Yes, and then trust them to turn Kay loose. Well, you going to do it? Not quite. I'll take the papers to them, and then we'll try a trick of our own, too. Come on, I'll give you the details on the way. Car. It sure is. I'll go on in and see what gives. You do your stuff and then get out of sight. Okay. Come in. Anybody with you? Where's Miss Roberts? We'll talk about her later. All right. What's the proposition? Give me those shipping schedules now. If they're OK, and nobody bothers us, Miss Roberts will be turned loose as soon as we get the uranium. That's what you say. You better believe me. If you ever want to see that girl again. Well, I guess I'll have to. Here are the schedules. All right, you stay here till I get away. And don't get any bright ideas about following me.
It looks like it worked all right. Yeah. I put the calcium ion in the radiator and opened the pet cock a little. He'll be easy to track until he runs out of water. Let's get going. Okay, I got the schedules all right. Nobody tried to follow me here. But my radiator's boiled dry. Fill it up for me, will you? Okay. You better leave the car here. I will see that stuff in the radiator. If it does, they'll be expecting us. Let's circle around and try the back door. Washing your radiator and then open the petcock. I probably figured to trail you here. Watch that door. I'll put a gag on the girl. Hold it. Drop that gun. All right, I'll drop your guns. Get some rope, Katie. Well, Mr. Duncan, you've outsmarted yourself this time. You two are going to live just long enough for me to make certain that these schedules aren't phonies.
this gang of criminals must be really desperate to resort to kidnapping a woman to gain their ends. Yes, and you can't blame the government for not wanting to ship critical materials by truck as long as those hijackers are still operating. Gentlemen, I have a solution to the problem, but I'm afraid you're not going to like it. I intend to protect every one of my government shipments with armed guards, both in the trucks and in the escorting patrol cars. Why, the cost would be prohibitive. We couldn't possibly make expenses. I realize that, but this is a national emergency, and I feel it warrants some personal sacrifice on my part. Well, that's all very well for you, Crandall. Your company is big enough to stand the loss. But it would put the rest of us out of business. I knew you wouldn't like it, but I intend to carry it out if the government will give me the orders under those conditions. I'm sure they will. Well, then there's nothing the rest of us can do about it. Crandall's just proposed an arrangement which will seriously interfere with our hijacking operations and he must be removed. That's a tough order. Crandall always has a bodyguard. The guard never goes with him into offices where business is being discussed. I'll arrange to have him call the association office. You can do the rest. Isn't that place rather public for any shooting? Shooting won't be necessary. Get those glass bulbs out of the box in the file behind you. Those are filled with a deadly poison. So be careful that you don't drop them until you're ready. Let's go. Calling Trucking Association. Calling Trucking Association. Come in, Hal. All checkpoints OK? Yes, just a minute, Hal. I'll read you the report. Good morning, Miss Roberts. Good morning, Mr. Crandall. Am I early? Why, I don't know. Were you expecting the others? Of course. My office received a message from Mr. Duncan that we were having a special meeting. Did you hear that, Hal? Yes, but I didn't call any meeting. Well, that's funny. It must have been... Get away from that radio. What is this? Quiet, you. Put him in that chair and then tie them both up. Bring that cord over here. Tie it to the basket. I want to be as far away from these things as possible when they break. Remember, they're filled with poison gas. Go. Poison gas? Yes, but I don't know why they wanted to kill us. They didn't try to get any information out of you? No, they didn't. They didn't even explain anything. I'm afraid you're taking over the government trucking business was responsible for this, Mr. Crandall. And they'll keep right on trying to get you out of the way. I realize that. I'll have to be more careful in the future. 
Well, I'll see that you get back to your office. And I suggest that you keep a bodyguard with you all the time. I intend to. <coughs> Crandall's gonna be even tougher to get at. Now he's sure to be well guarded. Your best chance is an attack on his home. They've got watchmen around that place day and night. I know, but they won't stop you. The Armstrong Company is shipping a truckload of explosives, which you can hijack without any difficulty. I'll furnish you with a remote control unit to install in the truck so that you can send it anywhere without a driver. You will have to be sure that you're... Calling Hal Duncan. Calling Hal Duncan. Come in, Kay. Armstrong's truck, number 14, was stolen about 9 last night on Highway 25, just south of Ashbridge. Why wasn't it reported sooner? Someone must have slipped up and forgot to notify us. Well, if they took the truck to town, we'll never find it now. But they might have taken it into the back country and abandoned it after they looted it. I'll take a look around. Regan, climb out of there. Now he's out cold. We'll let him go with the explosives. He might come too. Oh, what's the difference? The controls are locked in. Come on.
I was able to smash part of the control unit so I could keep the truck from hitting Mr. Crandall's house. But I couldn't stop it from hitting the garage. You did all right. You saved me and my family from being blown to bits. You were very fortunate. But you may not be so lucky the next time if you insist on trying to handle all the government trucking orders yourself. I don't intend to be intimidated. But how about the risk to your family? I'm afraid they're right, Mr. Crandall. It's obvious that this gang of hijackers will stop at nothing. And I don't think it's fair to ask you to face all the danger alone. How else are you going to keep these critical shipments moving? Well, I think it's worthwhile trying my system of giving SEAL shipping orders to each of you as late as possible. Now, we've tried keeping our schedule secret before. But uh, the information always seems to leak out. But my method will at least make it easier to find the leak. For instance, if one of your cargoes is hijacked, we'll know that the trouble is in your organization and we can act accordingly. It'll make each of you more or less responsible for policing your own organization. But if you're willing to try it, I think it might solve our problem. I'll be glad to cooperate. Well, so will I. I'll give it a try. Very well, since you all feel that way, I'll go along with you. Good. Here are some orders for immediate shipment. I'll still be out with a patrol car most of the time, but you can always contact me by radio. As long as Duncan's system of sealed orders is in operation, it'll be very difficult for me to learn when any of the cargoes we want are being shipped by any of the other companies. Can't you lift stuff from some of your own trucks? Occasionally, but I wouldn't dare do it too often. And if I'm to keep filling my foreign orders, I must have a steady supply of critical materials from the government stockpile. Looks like we'd better get rid of Duncan. We will. And at the same time, secure a supply of refined uranium which I need. One of Thompson's drivers is on my payroll. He'll let me know when the uranium is being shipped. He'll have no trouble taking over the truck. But Duncan is sure to be keeping a check on it. So as soon as you get the uranium, you ought to go. Okay, she's all yours. Good, but we're not through with you yet. Where's the stuff? Right on the back of the load. Uh, give us a hand with it. There it is. Put it in the back of the station wagon. Start pulling out and pull over onto 29. If nobody stops you, go right on into the 3rd Street warehouse. Look, I don't want to get into this too deep. I can say I was just hijacked and stay in the clear, but if I start... You'll do what you're told. We'll trail along behind you just in case you do get into any trouble. Get going. He's liable to make trouble. So what? We don't need him anymore. If he wants to start anything, we'll finish it. Number six is 15 minutes overdue at Bentley's checking station. Right, Kay, we'll look into it. Maybe he just blew a tire. Maybe, but that truck was carrying a lot of dollars worth of refined uranium, so we gotta be sure. Okay, where to? Well, if the hijackers try to run it into town, 29 is the only turnoff they could have made. We're on our way. somebody burning up the road. It was Duncan, all right. Yeah, this is working out fine. Just trail along easy and we see what happens.
There it is. Okay, we can stop him. Not yet. This is our chance to find out where they're taking the stolen stuff. Just follow him, not too close. Suit yourself. What if he trails him to the warehouse? Well, that's all right, too. We can take care of him there as well as any place. Uranium still on your truck? No, I was hijacked. Hijacked? Well, why didn't you report it to the police? Because I'm in a jam. I got tangled up with... Truck. You can't do that. Keep out of this or you'll get hurt. Beat it. and pulled out.
Duncan is sure to be making a special effort to recover that uranium. So I don't want to move it until I learn what his plans are. Well, maybe you can find out something at the association meeting. I can't count on that. So I'm going to plant a small radio center in the association office. You stay here with your receiver open and note everything that comes over. Okay. The loss of that uranium is very serious. The government needs it badly for the atomic bomb program. And some foreign country would be very glad to get it for the same purpose. Of course, but we hope to be able to prevent that. How? Well, I'd rather not answer that now, Mr. Willard. Yeah, you're quite right. I, uh, I apologize. No, it's certainly none of our business. Oh, did you get that schedule of steamer sailings? Oh, yes, here it is. We have enough agents to cover all the ships and planes. But won't it be quite a job to inspect every shipment? Well, that won't be necessary. Uranium is easily detected with a Geiger counter, so all the agent has to do is to stand by with a counter while the cargo's being loaded. That's all we need to know. We'll do our own shipping. Come on. I'm going over to headquarters. I'll check with you on the radio when I start back. All right, Hal. Trucking Association. Calling Trucking Association. Come in, Hal. Everything okay? Yes, all the checkpoints are checked out. Something blew out. Try another station. Help. Our receiver's okay. Must be something wrong with K's set. Well, something happened to K. Get going. Sounds like a loose connection. Maybe it's in the circuit or the antenna. your radio transmitter. You mean somebody's been overhearing everything that's been said in here? That's right. But how in the world did it get in here? I don't know. Someone could have broken in here last night and planted it. Now, the important thing is that the crooks must have heard that we're going to check all foreign cargoes with Geiger counters. So what will they do about it? Well, they'll know that they can't get the uranium out through any regular shipping channel, so they'll have to try some other way. About the only other way they could do it would be to charter a private plane or boat and smuggle it out to some foreign steamer offshore. Let's check all boat and plane charter services. Come on, Sam.
Hello? You in charge here? Yes. What can I do for you? Government agent. Oh? We're trying to check up on some smugglers. Do you do much chartering? Some. Mostly fishing parties. We've got a couple out today. I'm sure they're OK. However, you can check them when they come in. Well, I'm more interested in night trips. Oh, there's never anything doing around here at nights. OK, thanks. Charter schedule? Yeah. There's something phony about his no night trip story. There sure is. We'll pick up your car and you can go out to the airport. I'll come back here and check up on this place tonight. Okay. the stuff? Yeah, it's in the station wagon. Well, you might as well get it aboard. Get your hands up and turn around. get rid of him, we can dump him when we get out to sea. All right. Give me a hand with him. How much further? We're not out of the harbor yet. The ship's 12 miles offshore. Let's hear what the Coast Guard's doing. Attention, all Coast Guard patrols. An unidentified steamer is reported standing by 12 miles off the breakwater. Be on the lookout for any shore craft trying to contact her. Hey, that could be a bad break for us. Yeah, if they catch up with us, we're out of luck.
takes us out. It's a fog spinning out. before that cutter picks us up. This fog spinning out. around for Regan and Katie, but we never found them. Maybe this explains why. Two unidentified men were picked up by a fishing boat just outside the harbor last night. They refused to explain what had happened to them and disappeared as soon as they were landed. Well, that's probably the answer, so we'll be having trouble with them again. Are there any more important shipments scheduled? Well, just routine stuff, nothing the hijackers would be interested in. See, I've got an idea. We might be able to get some good out of that radio center they planted on us. If they want information, I can give them something that'll really fix them up. Come on. I'll bring it in. You ask me about shipments and then keep following my lead. Anything important today? Yes, I have to prepare shipping instructions for another consignment of uranium. Same usual sealed orders? No, we're going to try something different this time. We've had the uranium packed in dummy boxes marked soap powder. We're going to bring it in as ordinary cargo. Oh, I see. And uh, who's going to haul it? Well, give it to Armstrong. 
Just make out a regular shipping order and have him bring it in on his number seven truck over Highway 26 tomorrow morning. I'll take the orders over myself. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hal. They sure laid it on the line for us. Yep, that's all we need to know. The boss will pay plenty for that uranium. Someone was listening in to appreciate our little act. Well, if they were, they'll certainly get a surprise when they stick up that truck tomorrow. <laughs> get over to the side of the road and don't make any breaks. Soap powder you've been looking for, boys, but I don't think you want it. It really is soap. I right, turn around with your hands up. You can go now, Joe. Thanks. We're going to use your car. Get it off the road, Sam. All right, get going. See that you have a radio. Can you get in touch with your boss? Well, think it over. You two have got an awful lot of charges against you to be taking the whole rap alone. What's the deal? Well, tell him you have to see him right away. Then have him come out and meet us somewhere near here. You think I could talk him into coming out in the sticks to see us? Well, that's up to you. But if you expect to get any consideration for turning state's evidence, you better do it. All right, I'll give it a try. Where do you want to meet him? Now, that barn where you took Miss Roberts would be all right. Does he know where it is? Yeah. And go to it. Calling V-317. Calling V-317. Come in, Regan. We got the uranium, but it doesn't look like the real stuff. You'd better come out and look it over. You want me to come out from here? Yeah, you'd better. This is very important. Very well. Where will I meet you? At the old barn, just off the Oak Mountain Road. I'll be there as soon as possible. Calling R-46. Calling R-46. Barnett speaking, come in. Regan's in trouble. I don't know just what's wrong, but he asked me to meet him at the old barn on Oak Mountain Road. He knows I never allow myself to be seen, so he must have been forced to call me. Go out to the barn at once and see what's happening. Yes, sir. I can't see from here. I'm going out the back door. Watch him.
Okay, copper, we're taking over. Now you're gonna get a chance to meet our real boss. He'll be glad to get some information about your government shipping schedules. Get going. What about my friend? He can take care of himself when he comes to. Start walking. I'll be right behind you. Close, that means the ore dump's loaded. We'll fix Duncan. Here, let's dump that car over and block the tunnel. That car will stop him just long enough for us to trip the ore dump.
Let's dump that car over and block the tunnel. That car will stop him just long enough for us to trip the ore dump. Our trap to catch the crooks failed completely. As all your other attempts have. Well, I'll admit I haven't put any hijackers behind bars yet, but I think I finally have the evidence that'll break this case wide open. Are you at liberty to tell us what this evidence consists of? Well, only to the extent of saying that it will implicate one of you gentlemen in this room. Well, what in the world do you mean? I mean that I'm convinced that one of the four of you knows a great deal more about this hijacking gang than you've ever admitted. I'm saying this in the hopes that the person involved would care to make a statement before I turn the case over to the district attorney. All I can say is you better have plenty of evidence to back up this outrageous charge. I'm sure I have nothing to say. You might as well go ahead with your plan, Duncan. I intend to. The district attorney is coming over here tonight, and I'm turning everything over to him. Hal, are you sure your evidence is good enough? Well, that's good enough to prove that one of them's guilty, but I don't know which one. I was hoping someone would make a break when I came out with that accusation. You mean you were bluffing about the district attorney? No, I'm going to turn everything over to him. Maybe he can find some way to pin it on the guilty man. Let's go over our files and get everything together. So, according to Duncan, he can turn over the district attorney enough evidence to expose me. Well, maybe he's bluffing. He probably is, but I can't take that chance. The district attorney must not be allowed to take Duncan's evidence into court. Hey, knocking off a district attorney's bad business. Not if it appears to be an accident. We must learn where Duncan's papers will be taken tonight, so I will arrange to leave one of our men at his... We have to use this office. Can you finish up later? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thanks. These are all my reports on the case. Oh, yes. I want to study these thoroughly. But first, I'd like to hear the story in your own words. Sure. It started when I was appointed government agent to investigate the hijacking of trucks. My assistant, Sam Bradley, and I were checking on a warehouse when we came across our first clue. The star came off of one of Armstrong's trucks. You sure? Positive. I looked at this cut in the casing, wondering how long it would last. Stick him up. Frisk him. Thank <laughs> you. 
recovered everything that was left in the underground storage place, but most of the stuff had already been shipped out. And of course, plenty more has been stolen since then. They always seem to know when the most valuable shipments are being made. Could the information leak out from anywhere except this office? Well, I don't see how. And it isn't only information about shipments that gets out. A few days later, I captured Regan, one of the hijackers. He doped himself and was pronounced dead. His friends picked up the supposed body and revived him. Now, nobody except members of this association knew where Regan was. Yet when I got there, his friends had already taken him away in a morgue car. I went after them and... to agree with you. One of the association members is undoubtedly working with the gang, but proving which one is going to be something else. Well, that's what's worrying me. I still think we can do it. I'll look these reports over thoroughly and see what I can figure out. Well, that's fine. Do you want to take the reports with you now? No, I still have an appointment in my office, and I don't like to take confidential material like that there until I've had a chance to look it over myself. But I would appreciate it if you take the records to my home in Glenwood. Sure. I'll drop you at your office on the way. You can go in now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. going to take the DA to his office. Then he's going to take the papers to his home in Glenwood. Good. We'll have time to set a trap for Duncan when he goes over the pass. Okay, he got it. Now let's catch up with that station wagon. Wow. 
records, all right. Let's get out of here. Of course, I can't prove that it wasn't an accident, but it looked to me like a deliberate attempt at murder. As it was, all of my records and notes were destroyed in the fire. Is it possible to replace them? Uh, partially. I have duplicates of some of the records, and I can rewrite most of my reports from memory. I'm getting everything compiled again to turn over to the district attorney. And you still think he'll find your evidence strong enough to indict one of us? I'm sure he will. So if any of you would care to make a statement first, it'd make it easier for everyone. I've had enough of this. We've tried to cooperate with you, and the only thing it's brought us is your ridiculous accusations. I don't see why we should continue to take orders from you. Thompson, would you like to be the first one of us to refuse to cooperate with a government agent? No. No, I don't suppose I could do that without putting myself under suspicion. But I don't intend to sit here and listen to any more insults. You don't seem to be very popular. No, and I couldn't get anybody mad enough to make a break, which was what I was trying to do. Well, I'd be willing to bet you made one of them mad enough to try again to murder you. Probably. Especially now that they know that I'm still going to turn over my report to the DA. Oh, will you get my folder out of the safe? I'll have to go through all my old notes and dig up the material for my new report. Well, it'll be quite a job. Say, here's something that ought to help me trap those crooks. When I made Regan call his boss, I got the wavelength of both of their radios. Well, you could listen in on them. You might hear something that would help. Yes, but that's not what I was thinking about. If I could maneuver Regan into the position where he has to call his boss again on the radio, I could triangulate the position of his boss's set. Sounds good. We'll have to set up two listening points with direction finders. You can handle one here, and I'll plant Sam with another one up in the hills. Then if I can get them to chase me to the right spot, I'll have things arranged so that I can... So you'll have to try again to stop Duncan. And this time, be sure your plans work out. Do you think you'll take the reports to the district attorney's house? I don't know. So plant someone at the association office at all times. Okay. Calling R-48. Calling R-48. Come in, Gray. He's getting into his car right now. It's a green four-door sedan with white sidewall tires headed east. He may turn left directly in front of you. OK, we'll pick him up. That's him, all right. Well, what are you going to do about it here? Trail him for a while and see where he goes. Looks like he's headed out of town. Good, that'll make it easier for us. Catch up with him now. All right. He must have spotted us. Yeah, but stay with it. We can catch him.
I like this setup. Looks like he's trying to lead us into a trap. Let's get back to the car and call the boss. so far. They followed me to the ledge and then went back to their car to call their boss. Is this all ready? Yeah. Calling Trucking Association. Calling Trucking Association. Come in, Hal. We're all in position. If Regan and Katie are going to call their boss, it'll be in the next few minutes. So get on his frequency and have your direction loop ready. Right. Anyway, we got the report. Yeah, but this whole setup looks phony to me. Let's pull out of here. Duncan out in the hills, but he left his car and ran away. Then we picked up his briefcase full of reports. But it sort of looks like a rigged up deal to me. Do the reports seem authentic? Near as I can tell. But if they are, I can't figure out why he left them here for us. Bring them in to me at once, but be sure you're not followed. This may be some kind of a scheme to locate me. Okay, we'll be careful. What's the bearing? 172. Now get Case. Calling Truck Association. Calling Truck Association. Come in, Sam. Did you get his bearing? Yes, Sam. It's 224. 224. There we are. The northeast corner of 4th and Main. That's all we need to know. Yes, let's get going. find out which office he's in. Well, we know that Regan and Katie should be here, so we'll just have to start checking offices until we can find them. Let's start at the top and work down. Good enough. These reports seem genuine, but there's nothing in them of any importance. I expect this is some kind of a scheme to trap us. So you'd better hide out at the underground warehouse for a few days until I can learn what's going on. OK.
George, mister. Thanks, I'm okay. Find a policeman and have him come up to room 511 in this building. Yes, sir. Regan. Get out at once. The police will be here any minute. Go to the underground warehouse and finish that hidden vault job. Take the intercom with you. like much, but I'll take them back to the office and look them over. You better stand by until the detectives get here. They'll want to check for fingerprints. Yes, sir. The papers we found were just copies of shipping schedules, a few bills and receipts, mostly for car rentals and repairs. There was nothing that'll be of much help except to prove that the place was headquarters for the hijacking gang. But you didn't find anything to prove that the mastermind you think is running the gang had ever even been there. No, I didn't. In fact, the place looked more like a waiting room than a regular office. The only thing I can figure out is that Regan and Katie simply stayed in that room until they got their orders by phone or radio. So you still have no clue to who or where the real leader is? No. Which means you've made no progress whatever. And we still don't dare haul any critical supplies for the government. Well, it isn't quite that bad. The gang has been disorganized enough that it'll certainly take them some time to get into operation again. So I think we can go ahead with our shipment safely. Here are your shipping orders and schedules. Aren't you being a little careless in handing out these orders when you think one of us is the master criminal? As long as I'm the government agent in charge, I'll continue to handle this case in my own way, Mr. Armstrong. Is this thing as hopeless as it seems? Well, not quite. I didn't mention it at the meeting, but I found this among the other papers in that office. Why, well, it seems to be a diagram for some kind of construction. That's right. And from the outline, it's that cave under the warehouse where we found all that stolen equipment. You mean they're using it again? Well, there was no recess like that in the wall when we were there before. They must have just put it in. That sounds reasonable. Well, anyway, it's worth checking, so Sam and I are going down there. Well, if they're using that place, it's sure to be guarded. So we'll sneak in the back way through that tunnel from the waterfront. Be careful, Hal. We will. Looks okay. Nobody will ever suspect there's a vault back of that wall. Well, let's get this landmine hooked up again. You sure this mine isn't too strong? Could blow up the whole place. No, but it'll sure take care of anybody that comes prowling around the vault. Look it back up to the pillar again. Keep it about two inches off the ground. We're almost there, so take it easy. Okay. Calling R-37. Calling R-37. Come in. Is the concealed vault ready? Yes, it's all set. Good. The police have finally left here. I've called Daly to come over and help me pack the papers. They'll be ready by the time you and Katie get here, and you can take them back to the vault. Good. We'll leave right away. Come on. Hold it.
okay? Yeah, I guess so. Then cuff this one up and call the police. Regan's finished. From what we heard on the radio, the big boss is up in that office, and I'm going after him. Okay. papers through to you. Okay. That's all the important ones. I'm going to burn the rest of them. Okay, sir. Drop that bag and get your hands up. Good to be back in business again. And no hijackers to worry about. Well, this baby handles like a limousine. Hey, that's enough of that. Pull up and let me drive. Oh, no, Hal. You're still a government agent. You shouldn't be driving a truck. Well, government agent or no government agent, I'm not taking any chances of cracking up this truck. for a while, yeah? Gee, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 